coming to you live here. Um, actually staying in Las Vegas for a little bit right now. And we're only two miles or less, more or less, from where the shootings happened a couple days ago. It's quite an event to have had on the news constantly here where we are and the lives of people lost. So I just wanted to come on today and just talk a little bit about Got Hugs because no matter where we are, where we live, what we're doing, we have a wonderful opportunity to be a blessing to people all around us. You know, it's been made so real by these things that have happened that life is not guaranteed. We don't know when life is gonna change for us and it can happen overnight. I remember when I was 19 years old, my 13 year old brother was hit by a car. A teenager was trying to beat a red light and so he gunned his motor and hit my brother who was walking across the intersection and immediately on impact he was killed. We had no idea when we all left for school that day that uh, that was going to be the last time we would see our brother. So you just don't know. But the thing that's so important is that we do have eternal life to look forward to. That is if we know Christ. So that's really important in our mandate for us as Christians. But I just wanted to talk today about Got Hugs because there's some things that we need to understand right before these shootings happened too, all the political stuff going on and everyone saying so many ugly things about one another and different things happening. I mean, we need to start changing that rhetoric. Woo, can I get an amen on that? And so I was reading some of these verses from the Bible and I just thought this is so powerful and it's a good reminder for all of us just to be more aware of the people that are all around us, whether we know their political or whatever else affiliations that they might have. They're people after all, and we need to love them with the God kind of love, because God loves all of us. And in Ephesians 4, it says, say only what is good and helpful to those that you are talking to and what will give them a blessing. Wow, I think the majority of Facebook posts would be deleted if we put them by that criteria. <laughs> Say only what is good and helpful to those you are talking to and what will give them a blessing. Not you a blessing, but give them a blessing. Woo, that's powerful. The NIV says it this way, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen. Hmm. We're to benefit the people that are listening to us, to build them up, to make their day for the good, right? So that's real important. Then another scripture in Galatians 4, it says, For dear brothers, you have been given freedom. Oh, not freedom to do wrong, but freedom to love and serve each other. For the whole law can be summed up in this one command, love others as you love yourself. But if, now check this out what he says, but if instead of showing love amongst yourselves, you are always critical and catty, watch out. <laughs> Beware of ruining each other. You know, there is a plot going on in the world today, a plot of stirring the pot to keep people at each other's throats and keep people uh, divided amongst one another because you don't think everything exactly the same and we need to just stop all that nonsense and we need to make allowances for one another because we love each other and beware of ruining each other if we're always critical and catty but instead saying things that are edifying and building one another up and blessing one another Woo, that's so awesome now it says in Galatians 6 verse 9 after a while, we'll reap a harvest of blessing if we don't get discouraged and give up. So sometimes when we see so many bad things happening, I mean, today we're having hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, fires, every kind of thing, terrorist attacks, lone shooters. I mean, there's just so many things going on around in our world. Why would we want to use our words to keep putting fuel on the fire and helping the enemy of our soul out by 
putting one another down and being hateful and spiteful and all those things. <clears throat> let's just not do that. Instead, let's be one that's dispensing love and blessings and kindness and generosity of heart and of character and serve one another because then we're going to reap a harvest of blessing because you reap what you sow, right? So if we are constantly giving out a, of a generous heart, love and appreciation and validation instead of undermining and demeaning and calling our leaders and other people around us different kinds of names and things like that. That's not edifying. That's not Christ-like. So if we could change some of that, my goodness, what a better place it would be, right? So if we don't get discouraged because Jesus is Lord over the, the United States of America, I proclaim that all the time, and he's Lord over whatever country you live in as well in Jesus' name because where we are as Christians, we can declare those things. And then we need to live up to that Lordship of Christ. And if we are his bond servants because we love, you know, in the Old Testament, if they were going to be a bond servant to someone, they would put their ear on the doorpost and then they would put it all through that ear so there would be a, an opening in the ear and that would be a sign or an indicator that you were a bond servant to that master in other words you served them because you loved them and you wanted to serve them out of a heart of that and so we as Christians can put our ear to the doorpost and make a decisive dedication that we are serving the Lord and allowing Him and His rule and reign in our lives to be what's important. And in that, we're going to be dispensers of the love of God, the kindness of God, the mercies of God. His mercies are new every morning. And to have that generosity of spirit to give one another the benefit of the doubt, or as my dad always used to say, the B-O-D, he would say, did you give him the B-O-D? And I'm like, what is that? The benefit of the doubt. And not be as the scripture told us there in Galatians 4.13. To be critical and catty. To stop that because we are ruining ourselves. All of us collectively as humanity. There is an enemy that's stirring the pot as I said. And we need to just turn the fire off on that stirring. And we need to be the change that's going to bring this solution to a simmer of love for one another, of value and an appreciation for one another as fellow human beings. Now in Galatians 6, 2, it says to share each other's troubles and problems and so obey our Lord's commands. So there's people all around us that need us to be a dispenser of God to them, of God's love and of speaking words of kindness and words of encouragement and words of blessing. And then it goes on to say in verse three, which this is the most powerful verse of this whole passage that I'm sharing with you right now today. If anyone thinks he is too great to stoop to this, stoop to what? Stoop to being kind and loving and gracious in our words rather than trying to put people down and demean people. He is fooling himself. He's really a nobody. Oh my goodness, that is so powerful. If anyone thinks they're too great to stoop to what? To being loving and kind and merciful and generous with their personality and with their caring and with their character, then you're really a nobody. You know, it takes a servant heart, doesn't it, to lower ourselves, to lift someone else up. And that's what we can do. That's so powerful. Paul is saying that if we don't have time to encourage other people, then we're really a loser, a nobody. Oh, man, that's not nice to hear, right? Okay. Well, since we're all valuable in God's sight, then he wants us to encourage one another. And we can do that. We can let the things that we say and the things that we post be edifying and being encouragement to one another and lift one another up, inspire one another to be better people and to be gracious one to another, practicing the art of hospitality and of graciousness. Wow, that is such an important thing. I heard a statistic a while back that it takes seven hugs a day to be emotionally healthy. And I think when there are 
situations where people are very negative and critical, I think that their uh, need for love is so high and that maybe if we were better um, and kinder and more generous of nature with people that we wouldn't see so much mean-spiritedness going on around, right? And in this study that was done, nurses in the hospital discovered that when they made sure that their patients got hugs or were touched with loving touch, you know, on their hand or somewhere like that, that they actually recovered faster. You know, hugs are really important. There's power in a hug. And anybody can give a hug. Anybody can. If it's a heart hug or it's with your arms, you can give a hug. Verse 5 in Galatians 6 goes on to say, nobody's perfect. We all have our little faults and shortcomings. I mean, I even have faults and shortcomings. I know you just don't believe that, but it's true. And so it, we all need love and hugs and encouragement from one another. We don't know what each other has gone through or what critical things has been happening that's been difficult to come through. And so we just want to be one that helps one another lift each other up. So the scripture is telling us to stoop to serve one another by loving on each other. And one way we can do that is to hug. But not just to hug those who hug you, but to hug anyway, because it's interesting that they've discovered scientifically that hugging actually releases those feel-good endorphins. And we all need those feel-good endorphins. So if we could be a dispenser of the love of God with our words and with our hugs and our kindness and our gestures, we're loving and kind, we could actually raise up the feel-good endorphins on people and there wouldn't be such a need to be so mean-spirited in our world today. And I think it's really fascinating <laughs> God created us in the way that he did because he put our arms at just the right place that when we give someone a hug, we are actually embracing their heart and squeezing them with love. And isn't that powerful? So hug somebody today. Hug me today if you're looking for somebody to hug. You give me hearts and flowers on this Facebook Live, I'll really appreciate it. And give me a heart hug. You don't know what I've been going through, right? But you know, we can all use a hug. And I just give you hearts and flowers today. And, just I'm hugging you with my heart to just say, I really love you and I care about you and God loves you and God cares about you and he's with you in this situation that you're in today. So encourage others, encourage yourself because you also are a special treasure to God. You're his beloved. He's excited about you. He loves to be with you. He enjoys your fellowship and your time of talking together. And so you could lift your arms up and give God a big hug today and just say, I love you, God. Thanks for working things out in my life. Thanks for being with me in this life. You know, we're not alone. Isn't that fabulous? He is your daddy. Verse 10 of Galatians says, that's why whenever we can, whenever we can, we should always, always, always be kind to everyone. And then especially to our Christian brothers and sisters. Now, I saw a poll just the other day that it said um, the mean-spiritedness that's going around today uh, due to different things that are happening, and I'm not going to mention them all, but in the Christian community that they can tell by things that are said and done publicly and on Facebook and in the medias of the day that sadly Christians are just as negative and catty as people who are without God in their lives. I think, you know, for us as Christians, and that's who I'm talking to today on this Facebook Live, maybe we could set up a different standard here and uh, apply what the Bible tells us to apply, to be kind and to encourage one another. As he said, whenever we can, we should always be kind to everyone. And so if we could just take that to heart and be kind to one another, love one another, be generous toward one another, Tomorrow's not guaranteed to anybody. Love those around you. Love those people that you're in contact with, whether it's even on Facebook or wherever it is, in your home, in your workplace. Be kind, generous, gracious, hospitable, and display God's character to those that are around you so that you can be the one that they would look to in a time of need because they know that you have their heart 
that you care about them personally. That's just such an important attribute in our lives. So I know I'm carrying on a little bit, but you know, after the shooting just a couple days ago, it brings things back home to us that what really matters and what they noticed and what the news announcers were saying is how everybody forgot all the political nonsense, but they just did what they could to help one another. People were tearing apart the fencing to get gates and slats of the boards to use as gurneys to help people to get medical aid and they didn't know those people but they saw they were hurting I mean people just really went out of their way they stood five hours in line some of them to give blood I mean from three in the morning they were standing in line waiting till the blood bank would open at seven so they could give blood for people that they know or didn't know I mean everything was forgotten in that moment because it was just let's help one another and wow if we could just take on that attribute every day and just commit the things that we're concerned about to God. Let Him sort things out and work things out in His own way. But let's be someone who's on God's side. And we are a dispenser of kindness and generosity and love one to another. And man, will that make this world a better place for sure. And it'll make the enemy mad, really, which I get great delight in there. You know, the Bible says that uh, <laughs> Jesus was filled with the oil of gladness because He hated evil. And when we hate that evilness of mean-spiritedness and putting people down, and especially our leadership and different areas of life, no matter where our leadership is, if it's our boss or if it's politically or if it's in our, wherever it is, I'm trying to dance around this a little bit, but you know what I'm saying? Let's be loving and kind and generous and encouraging, and for things that bother us or we don't like let's just take that to God in prayer and let him work it out but let's not add fuel to the fire and be part of the problem of helping the enemy stir the pot and keep us all going in the wrong direction when in actuality they showed a scene of the emergency room after the shooting and there was just blood all over the place and as someone wisely said you couldn't tell what ethnicity or nationality or gender anybody's blood was all the blood looked the same splattered all over that emergency room hospital you know we're all made in the image of God God loves us we're all a work in progress nobody's perfect nobody's without fault and shortcomings if you're pointing fingers at somebody there's four pointing back at you right you all know that saying so instead let's be kind and loving and generous and bless one another in Jesus name encourage one another to be the best they can be and let's stoop to serve and help others so that their experience with you would be a, like being with Jesus. Wouldn't that be the most amazing thing? You know, God richly bless you. Have the most amazing rest of your day. I hope that this is just a wonderful reminder and encouragement that we can all use to up our game in this area of just being a dispenser of the goodness of God to one another and let's make everyone's day better because they've been around us or been in conversation with us or listened to us okay that would be an amazing antidote to get rid of this negativity that's trying to permeate in our culture today Woohoo! we can be a blessing of God going somewhere to happen in Jesus name alright love y'all